What I am offering is not this banana or coconut or chakra pongal or pulihodrai. I am offering the Brahmatha from in me. That is the only thing that pleases you. Brahmatha means seeing you and experiencing you in everything that I come into contact and merging my consciousness in you continuously. This is one stage. Of course, we can do that. The next stage is, can you do this? Prana Yaswaha Because I am not separated from you. We should have guts to do that. We are doing in a different way. Aham Vaispanaro Bhutva Praninam Deha Masritaha Vaishwanara is here. We are not eating. Vaishwanara is eating. Then, can you do this? Can you go into that level? What I am seeing is no different from me. In fact, previously also, we have discussed that Avahana is not coming from there. Avahana is coming from inside. I am only taking that higher energy from inside just to focus on it and increase that higher energy and take it back. This is Puja Udvasana. Can you do that? This is non-duality. And we say Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. Many times we come across this. We are doing Naivedyam. An ant comes. Can you remember the line in the Lita Sahasrama? Ah, Brahma Kedidani Varnashtam Vidhayini And do Namaskaram. Amma, you came in the form of ant to take my Naivedyam. Thank you. And put the jaggery to the ant. Can you do that? This is non-duality. It's not just enough we say Dvaita, Advaita. No. Let us put it into practice. I give you a wonderful example of how mother tested me. Whenever you are teaching or preaching something, the preacher has got one responsibility. Don't preach if you are not practicing. That's the rule we need to follow. If you are not practicing, then at least say, I am also learning. He said once, the learning should not be stopped. So what is that incident that mother has given to me in my life? When I was in Toronto, I was about to do the puja. Normally, I don't ask this question to my wife. What is the Naivedyam you have prepared? She said, Upma. Nobody has eaten, no? That was the duality I was having. And mother wanted to remove that duality through a test. So I was starting the puja. Ratna Simhasanam. Padyam, Arkyam. Then my three-year-old grandson came, Shashwat. He didn't even change the diaper. He just got up from the bed. He came and directly sat in my lap. The first thing, I need to accept that. He said, Hungry, that means hungry. I want that. Upma. That's when, with Guru's grace, my mother's grace, immediately I was alert. This strange thing happening means mother is talking to me. I stopped this padhyam and of course I was a little bit into the shastras. I did the prakshana and fed my grandson. Pranayasvaha, Apanayasvaha. 
You won't believe exactly six times he has taken. Enough, he went. That is, I think, non-duality. The last part of the story is, so I continued my puja. When it came to Naivedyam, I didn't offer the Naivedyam. I said, you already took the Naivedyam. You ate the Naivedyam. Thank you. So skip the Naivedyam when I went to Thambulam. It's all not my greatness. How my guru trained me and gave me the opportunity to, you know, put that into practice. We said that there is no difference between what we see and what we are. We also talked about the duality between human beings and animals. If you go deeper, human being and insects. A wonderful example is Ramana Maharshi, when he got cancer, got a big wound on his knee. And there was a worm which is hurting him by eating the skin. And he was walking, it fell down. You all know that story probably. He immediately put the worm back on the wound. And the disciples around him said, what is that master you are doing? He said, anyways it is going to be burnt. Let it eat. There is no difference between me and that insect. That is Ramana Maharshi and we are using electrical bat to kill these mosquitoes. Where are we? We need to. Have you ever put your finger on that wires in the bat? You get shock. This five foot, six foot forms getting that much shock. Have you ever imagined how the tiny creature will feel? Where is this duality taking you? I'm not saying invite the mosquitoes on your body. No. At least when it is flying, don't kill it. I never kill. When it falls on my body, I'll say, I am diabetic. Probably you may not know. Don't get into trouble. Go away. I'll do that. Talk to mosquito. If it still bites out of pain, and I'll say, Sivo hum. Enough. As aham siva, as siva, I'm killing you. This is a practical non-duality. Let us start from the small, small things. Suppose you are doing puja, okay? You have a flower in your hand. And while doing the puja, the flower falls down. It may be your carelessness. You didn't hold the flower properly. What you are doing? What is fallen on the ground, not and fit for puja. You are punishing the flower for your carelessness. The flower is also Ambari. Has it not got the right to be at Ambal's feet? Who are you to decide? Everything has got a right. You held it, it fell on the ground. Oh, sorry. Put it back on Ambar's feet and feel that happiness, that flower may be apparently enjoying to be at the feet of mother. You become that flower, non-duality. Even at the puja also, how do you offer Ratna Simhasanam? Ratna Simhasanam Samarpayami. What is that? A chair. Can you throw the chair on Ambal's head? Because we don't see her as goddess mother, icon only. If we are seeing at least as goddess mother outside first, we'll take the flower and say, Ratna Simhasanam Samarpayami. With respect for hard to sit on a chair. Maya Hrudayani. Amma, this is only a replica of my heart. Mera ghar kulahi. Aao, baitho. Come and sit. This is pure. 
There are no thorns of desire in my heart. Come and sit. This is the one. If you are having non-duality, whatever you like, you need to offer to the God. Are we doing that? For us, a different kind of sari or dhoti. For puja, the shopkeeper will ask you, what is for puja for you? No, it's only puja only. The carelessness. And he'll give you a hundred rupees sari. Astrig, man, samarpayami. Who are you cheating? You are wearing 10,000 rupees sari on you or dhoti on you. And he is offering hundred rupees. Duality. Shabari was the best example. She ate those fruit because in as much as I enjoy the food, I want my Rama also. There is some duality, but the feeling with which she treated Rama, I want my Rama also to enjoy the best fruit. So she bit every fruit, what you call H.I. Engili, Juta, and offered that half-eaten fruit to Rama. But still, are we, you know, blaming her now? No, she got into the history books as the best bhakta in Ramayanam. 